Hey ho people, it's Stylo, sir, and it's Kirioff, and we're back with more amazing gaming news. So, uh, where shall we begin for this week? Will it be about the blah blah? That'd be nice if I could talk. Where shall we begin for this week? Well, I'll tell you where we'll begin, boy. I'll tell you. I'll tell you, boy. We'll start with, uh, I think we'll start with Sopa. Now, on the 18th of December, I did a nice little brief explanation about Sopa. So, if, you, if you're unsure as to what Sopa actually is, and you can't be bothered to listen to what I'm about to splurge out to you, then by all means go and watch that video. It's I think it's only like four minutes long, and I'll tell you what SOPA is, and uh well, you love it. Well let's test Kirioff. Let's let's see if Kirioff's been watching the content on the channel. Mr. Kirioff, would you like to explain to me what SOPA is? Well, briefly, briefly, SOPA is a bill that's currently being voted on and discussed and so on in the US. Well, I think the vote has been postponed until next year. Good lord, I know my stuff. Yeah. Uh which basically means that any sure court that is caught to be seen to be enabling copyright infringement, so say YouTube, someone uploads uh, a music video onto their channel because they like it, um, a copyright holder who could be anyone could basically turn up and say, excuse me, YouTube, what is this? And YouTube would say, we're not responsible for this. They would say, yes, you are. No one in the US can now look at your website because you've infringed copyright. Goodbye. And should you choose to go to YouTube, you would get a lovely window that says something along the lines of this website has been blacklisted or blocked. And it it's basically a whole bucket of rancid because any site really could be seen to be infringing copyright. Well, this is the thing. I mean, it, doing it, anything. It, SOPA just stands for... Um... I forgot. Stop online piracy. Action. Well done. And what it is is that was a little test, by the way. But I think he knew anyway. <laughs> That's why he bid me to eat it. Yeah. So I mean, it's a stop online piracy act, and it, it it's like broad. It's got like a very uh, the the reach of it is massive. So like Kiryov said, if you were to upload a clip to YouTube, this was the example I gave in the the brief explanation video. Um, your account would get banned off YouTube currently. You know, you'd have your video removed if you uploaded some copyright, you know, protected content. Say, you know, the latest film, you decided to upload it to YouTube because you're a bit of a dick. YouTube then just delete your account and tell you to get off. Well, what SOPA would allow corporations to do or copyright owners to say, hang on a minute, what is the vehicle of copyright infringement? Well, that's YouTube. It's not actually that user. YouTube have allowed them to do it. So then they'd come along and force YouTube to get rid of it, right? could potentially block YouTube, which I don't think would ever happen, but it means that they've got like the ultimate God-given power to say, bring that down, bring that down, bring that down. Now, if this has got some quite far-reaching consequences because if you think about it, if me and you do it, and is it pure on a game, Modern Warfare 3, which was terrible, you know, it was just Call of Duty 4, it was just Modern Warfare, the first one, repackaged yet again. If we were then saying it was bad, Activision could say, well, hold on a minute, I don't agree with this, Get in touch with YouTube. YouTube, by law, because of the, you know, this goes. This would go for the U.S. Department of Justice, and you know, with YouTube being an American company, they're obviously affected by it. So, what would happen is YouTube would then say to us, "Well, they wouldn't even say anything to us. They just remove the content, or they could block our channel, you know, or, you know, at the extreme end of it." Activision could be so pissed with YouTube because of all these other Call of Duty channels and whatever they could get the entire topic removed off YouTube. Now, things like that are extreme, and I don't think that'll happen. But there is another interesting point which we need to quickly go over, and it's the uh, Protect IP bill, which is like a lesser version of SOPA. And what probably might be happening here is they've put SOPA forward. It's like some mental extreme, you know, we're going to block everything kind of uh, bill, knowing that it will probably fail. That would then allow them to say, well, hold on a minute. What about Protect IP? which is like a lesser version. And then Congress might go, oh, that's not too bad, actually. You know, that's got some of the bits from Sober, but it ain't as crazy harsh. Let's go for that sort of thing. So it is dodgy. And, you know, with it being in America, but well, the main thing is the fact that you've got a load of like 60, 70 year old crazies in the American Congress who are, have got such a, a big decision to make. And I put this to you, right. Mr. Kirioff. How many 60 and 70 year olds do you know actually use the internet on a day, you know, to, to the capacity... We use it to, or even I know anything think, about the internet. I can't think of any. <laughs> See, because all they understand is piracy. 
and theft. They think it's robbery, theft, but they don't, they, you know, they don't understand it and, it. and it's frightening to think that, you know, that kind of decision could fall to them people where they don't really know what they're doing. And it's uh, rancid. That's the that's the thing that for me has actually been the most terrifying because you, there are plenty of clips of Soper being discussed. In I think it's in Congress, isn't it, in the US? Yeah, Congress. Yeah. And the number of people who sit there and talk about it and have absolutely no technical knowledge whatsoever. It's just Sopa is uh, to stop uh, piracy uh, on the uh, internet. Uh, and after about five people have sat there and said that and begun with, I uh, don't have any technical knowledge. You think, if you have no technical knowledge of the subject, how can you possibly make an informed decision? Well, the thing is, it's not even technical knowledge. It's like, you know, the, the free the internet is the home of free speech unless you live in China or Iran <laughs> and North Korea. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you know, you should be able to put a... a I mean, I, I don't know. It, it pisses me off because everything Unit Lost is... I mean, if you think, if SOPA went through and, you know, it, it was enforced to its full capacity, there would be no Unit Lost. There would be no gaming content. Uh, on the the internet, effectively, American companies would be smashed. Although companies like IGN are smashed anyway, because God knows they must be taking bribes for some of the bullshit reviews they come out with on games. Um, so I don't think it'd probably affect them. But other companies, you know, would be kippered. I mean, we wouldn't be kippered, kippered. It just mean that we'd be blocked in the US, which is obviously quite bad. We'd still have UnitLoss.com, but we wouldn't really have the YouTube channel because that's an American-based company, and that would get shafted and that would be bad so it's like it's extreme i don't think it'll go through and i don't think it'll be even if it did it won't be you know used to the potential because i mean you can't really you can't you cannot remove youtube because you think about it there's other things behind the scene as well there's how much money does youtube make through advertising revenue you know how much money does youtube actually make activision ea companies like that yeah you know how much money does it make you know, other companies like music, you know, labels. How many times has the latest Rihanna song been watched? Probably 50 million times. Lady Gaga, 100 million views. You know, these are views. Okay, they're not people buying this song because they're just watching it on YouTube, but they're getting money off the ad impressions and they're also putting the brand out there. You know, and that's like, it wouldn't be, but I think it could probably it could potentially end up like a heavily censored thing which is obviously what everybody's pissed about because you know we don't want the chinese internet where they don't have to well, actually i've got a kind of funny story they don't have twitter or facebook um although they do but it's like chinese equivalents and um that the chinese version of twitter is almost got as many users as the actual twitter now that is quite impressive however if anything happens like you know on twitter you might see like a flash mob all oh, right let's go and flash mob uh I don't know. Where would you flash mob uh, the Which art one? gallery in London? No, we're going to flash mob the art galleries, right? Because we don't like them. Um, because they've got pictures of naked women and we don't want our kids to see that. So we're going to flash mob them, right? Well, in China, they actually censor it. So if you put that in, your account gets banned and nobody gets to see it. Like, what? And someone turns to... up at your house with a big stick and a hard yeah, expression. And put you, well, they just put you under house arrest for 10 years. Or whatever they do. So that's SOPA. You know, it, hopefully it won't go through. But as, as, as we say, it's been delayed until next year. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see where it goes. Where the important it goes. Thing as well is if SOPA doesn't go through, don't think that that's the end of the end of that particular debate. SOPA might not go through. But as Dolores has said, there is also the Protect IP Act. So it's like you might think that you've got a way home free when SOPA doesn't go through. But it could just be, as Dolores has said, a horrible ruse to make protect IP look more attractive. Yeah, that would make sense. That's what that's what the businessman inside me is saying, because that's what you, you typically do, I think. I don't mm. know. Who knows, bro? Anyway, moving on to the 19th of December, we've got Epic Inventor. Now, this looks like some kind of a Terraria ripoff. Um, in fact, it looks incredibly like Terraria. <laughs> would you like to elaborate on this? <laughs> it... Yeah, like you mentioned it, at the time I was thinking, I'm sure this looks like something I've played before, and it does look exactly like Terraria, but they're not really very helpful, this lot, the lads who made Epic Inventor, because they they, they haven't really given any description of what it is. As far as we know, side-scrolling indie game, where you can invent stuff. 
and mm. apparently it's a random ball of epic. And the, well, I guess the most interesting thing about it is you can pay what you want for the game, mm. um, but it's still in alpha. So knock yourself out if if you're gagging for more Terraria style gameplay, then by all means go and get Epic Inventor. Now on the 19th of December, we had the first report of the Steam uh, Steam sales steal. I, I, I don't know what's going on with my voice. The Steam deals. We had the first report off Kirioff on the, uh, I think that was the first day, yeah. Um, so we had a load of, of offers going through. Now, every day on the website, we will have a post up of all the offers um, in a nice little list. But also, I've been doing a uh, Stylos Super Steam Holiday Gift Guide thing, and I'll do that every every day as fast as possible. Usually, as soon as I can get onto Steam, which is about 15 minutes past six, well, about a quarter, well, maybe half past six, because the deals come out at six o'clock, and the Steam website gets absolutely smashed into the abyss, so it's kind of hard to see the deals. But as soon as I can see them, I'll get the video produced, and uh, I tend to get it up for around about 20 past seven at night, so it takes about an hour to get sorted and get up onto YouTube and for YouTube to process it and all that crap. But that, in conjunction with our the reports that we put on the website, we've got that pretty much covered. Um, so there shouldn't really be any questions when it comes to what game should I buy, because I pretty much tell you in the audio games you need to buy your pig. You must do as commanded. Buy the do game. as commanded. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next thing we've got on the night of December is well, this is still part of the Steam sale, and I'll let Kirioff explain this, but it's the uh, the great gift pile. This is this is a bit crazy actually. I quite like this. The the various Steam uh, games on Steam have had like new achievement things put in that you can aim towards. So if you, I think one of them was Orcs Must Die the other day. So if you completed a certain level using nothing but arrow traps, you got like a lump of coal. And what you can do with the coal? Or no, I think you get a lump of coal or a gift, don't you? It's like random. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. You did. It, it. It's kind of it took me by surprise at first when I read through it because it seems a little complicated but it sort of isn't you either get a gift or you get coal and you can either store the coal or that you can trade in the coal for a random gift and I think I'm you, sure you can you can the... you can share coal with other people as well you yeah. give gifts to each other there's like an infograph they've done or graphic I think which one of sort of tells say... you what's going on <laughs> it is yeah. kind of complicated though it's like it I know that one of the lads from Unit Lost um, community, he opened his coal and he got Saints Row the Third, which is, that's that's not bad for getting an achievement in a game. Um, but what you can do is you can save up all these pieces of coal that you get if you don't trade them for other stuff. And the coal is the ticket to enter the epic holiday giveaway. And uh, the more coal you have, the more chance you have of winning the epic holiday giveaway. And uh, it... As, as Mr. Rico rightly points out, it's called Epic because the top prize is every game on Steam. Good Lord. Which is... Good luck to downloading all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, every every game on Steam? How many games are on... Do we even know how many games are on Steam? Uh, thousands, possibly? I don't, I don't know. think there's thousands, is there? I think there's... There might be like 1,200 or something like that. I don't think there's thousands. Because I'm sure, games, I'm sure Gamers Mad. Gate's got more games on it than Steam. I might be wrong, but I think that was one of the selling points of Gamers Gate, the biggest. Yeah, I think it's the world's largest online store because I think they've got over like two and a half thousand games or something. Who knows? I don't even know. Anyway, so that's that's an absolutely shit explanation of the Steam Great Gift Pile. <laughs> but basically, you can play games, um, you complete the achievements, you get given a, a gift or a piece of coal. Um, the gift is obviously a gift, but you can turn the coal into gifts or you can like send the gifts to other people and do all kinds of mad crap. And like Kerry said, you do get actual like decent games. I mean, Saints Row the Third is a new game. Um, I know people were getting uh, Left 4 Dead 2 as well and stuff like that. I got completely shafted and I, I think I got 33% off voucher on THQ games. And I was like, okay. I got a 33% <laughs> voucher off Valve games. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? <laughs> I tried Bad to use times. it in conjunction with the sale, but it wouldn't let me. <laughs> what, to get it for like, well, that is terrible, Blake, but I can't yeah. blame you. I can't blame you for trying, so I can't blame you for trying. <laughs> okay, so on the 20th of December, we had uh, Star Wars, The Old Republic went live. Now, it this was this is a bit strange, actually, in my mind, because of all the content and all the people actually playing the game prior to its launch date, because of all the pre, pre-order, pre pre-access stuff going on. Um 
it don't really feel like a launch day. It's just, it's like, well, it's live now. Um, Merry Christmas. So there you go. Star Wars The Old Republic's live. And uh, apparently the servers, well, the servers, the website was totally smashed um, yesterday. People couldn't even get on the website. You got put in a queue on the website. That's how ridiculous it got. <laughs> Not only was the queues to get into the servers, there was a queue to get onto the website. I mean, that is crazy, son. That is, uh, that is, that, what? Queue to get on the website. Hello. If I, quite, I, got, Hello. I quite liked that. I liked that because I thought <laughs> that means that this is actually going to last. You know, I mean, Pete, there's so much interest in it. Maybe this is going to be one of those MMOs that doesn't have a huge amount of interest at launch and then becomes, you know, there's 10 people playing it by themselves on one server within two months. It I don't know. Like I mean, it. I think, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, I guess we'd have to play it to work out what exactly is going on. But I, I mean, it, I think it's going to be around. Um, whether it smashes Warcraft or whatever, I don't know. That's probably a bit of an ask. Uh, but I think it's always going to be there. Um, although there was some interesting debate where people were saying, uh, some industry figures, that it's probably going to be the last major subscription-based MMO um, mm. because of the way the market's been changing. Because, I mean, if you look at Guild Wars 2, you, you could argue that that could be a subscription-based MMO, but that's not how Guild Wars you know arena net have done it you know that you just buy the game and you can play the game as long as you want you just buy extra content that's um how you you, you know you effectively buy the expansion packs and that's your subscription for the next three or four months while they bring a new expansion pack out which makes more sense um and, and drives them to keep producing content whereas like your world of warcrafts and your, your star wars old republic where you're just paying a set fee sometimes you get the and i know this was the case with uh it was the case with EverQuest 2, where you get the game, the initial game is really, really good. Like, you know, they've spent the millions of dollars on development of the, you know, the first game. You're paying your subscription fee every month. But then it's almost when the expansion comes out, core team members or people who, you know, all the effort that went into the first game is now diluted down to the expansion. Doesn't look graphically as good. It might have not as good, you know, encounters. The, the environment is not as well designed because it's almost like a cheaper thing because I think they sit into the, they get into the uh, the thought train of, well, we're making this much a month. Why do we need to, you know, have the extra 10 staff on this game? We'll just put them on something else or let them go. You know, we don't need them. And that's the danger, I think, because I think the old Republic, from what a lot of people have been saying, the the early content is really good. Um and probably the whole game is probably quite good. But the question is, when the expansion comes out, will that be as good? Yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's case, strange. They need to try and maintain the standard, don't they? Because even in the beta, it, it, I quite I like the beta. I really like the game, actually. But it, it did feel like a, like a well-polished thing. And it's trying to keep that going all the way through. Because I think that's where pretty much every MMO falls down eventually. Yeah. You know, the content goes on. It just, you know... The, it's not like a it's not like a sudden thing. Like something comes out and you think, well, this does not feel like the game I was playing yesterday. It, it tends to be gradual, and it's sometimes it can be sudden. It. I think um, Star Wars Galaxies had a, a massive change to it. You know, like an overnight change, and that was quite devastating to the game and caused like a load of people to hemorrhage from it. Um, and there's there's other little things that it's usually like a small mechanic change or something that's you know like things got made a little bit too easy. This that. You know, I mean, you've only got to look at World of Warcraft. Look how easy that's become now. And it's it's almost like, you know, I know it's still got millions of people playing it, but I guess it's like a running joke. It's like, well, that's way too easy, World of Warcraft is now. You know, why why would people, why would you, if I said to you, Kirioff, why would you go, here you go, here's a month subscription to World of Warcraft. You know, what would you say to me if I give you that? Well, I'll tell you what you'll say to me. You'd be like, well, I, I don't, what? Well, what's why there's no point because it's not difficult there's no challenge in it sort of thing you know the only yeah. challenge is time invested which isn't really a challenge it's like pfft. anyway let's move on so uh on the 21st of december rico reported on the diablo 3 gaming hardware from uh, steel series now i think this has been out for some time um well i know the headset has maybe the mouse is new i don't know i'm not too sure um but this was the promotional stuff they put up on youtube where you got some people from the look like the 
the research and development department. Yes, we've designed a mouse that can withstand 10 million clicks. It's like, oh, right, lads. It doesn't half make me laugh when they try to, like, make something like a mouse or a keyboard or a headset appear like it's... Oh, it's so good. It's just... It's, it's game-changing, bloke. It's game-changing. <laughs> it's almost like an Apple keynote. What was the, what was the thing? That, order of magnitude. This is an order of magnitude more fantastical than that last iPhone. <laughs> oh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really like the branded stuff. Anyway, to be honest, the like when the whole game tie-in peripherals thing. But I've I never, I've never bought story. anything branded in my life, any game branded stuff at all. Because you know what, you know what, you well, what? It, yeah, to me, it's like well. That Steel Series Diablo 3 mouse looks like another Steel Series mouse. In fact, it looks identical. The only difference is it's got a red Diablo slash in the back of it and some funky like tattoo crap all over it. And are you paying an extra 20 quid for that? I don't know. The Steel Series headset. Now, the uh, the Diablo one is the. I've actually got one here which we're going to hardware review. Um, it's a Siberia version 2. Um, it's just white. And I think that retails at about 70 euros or something like that so about 60 quid um but the diablo 3 version is more expensive because it's got a red light in it it's it's worth the extra dollar mm -hmm. except it probably isn't i don't know it's that it's that problem isn't it it's like suddenly a premium price appears on a piece of hardware that people have been using for the last eight months anyway and a little part of you unless you're a massive massive fan of the game a little part of you thinks, why am I paying extra for this? And there's no real explanation apart from... because. Oh, so what happens if you don't even like the game? What happens if you go and buy... I mean, you imagine if you got one of them World of Warcraft... Uh, what were they called? Easy board or Ed, 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 Ed Z board oh, yeah, or some yeah. crap. Z board. You know, yeah. with all the shit on it and you can fold it up. What happens now if he's playing Old Republic on it? Oh, you look <laughs> a bit of a dick. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I, crazy. Did, I, I mean, I looked at those when I was looking for a keyboard, and at the time I did play World of Warcraft, and I was like, but, I mean, it looks like it's sort of interesting thing, like a good idea, but that, that was one of the first things that occurred to me. I thought, what if I don't play this anymore? You know, what if I stop playing the game? I'm just going to sit there looking at a keyboard that's branded with something I no longer have an interest in. Someone comes around, oh, do you play World of Warcraft? No. Oh, <laughs> what the hell's that? <laughs> Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> so moving on, moving on some from the Diablo mouse, we've got the uh, Terra Online political system on the 21st December. This was also reported by Ryko. Um, now, this was interesting. This was, although massively flawed. What it is, is there's... there's oh, well, let's talk about the graphics. The graphics in this Terra game look a bit insane. Insane being stupidly good. I was like, what? I mean, it's it's a Asian style to it. You know, like... It, anime thing well it's it's developed by south korean developers ain't it uh, is, isn't this um nc soft yes good old nc well it's not developed by nc soft but they're publishing it so whatever so uh what it is is it's a political system now there's the, there hasn't been a political system like this in an mmo that's their marketing point and you can like become the president almost of the of the world i presume i don't know of like a city but to do that you need to get um like votes off people and i actually commented on the uh, well there was two ways you could either get loads of votes so do it through popularity or you can do it through combat where you just go and smash the other people in who want to be the president of the world like but then if you think about this this is kind of bad you imagine if somebody like yogscast starts playing terror right and they decide they want to be the president of the world so they go to their youtube channel and they go click on this button and vote for me right because it actually says in a little trailer why don't you use youtube why don't you use facebook and all this crap and twitter how many votes would they get bloke right they could be the shittiest players at the game in the entire world right but i guess this is a, a relevant uh, example of what politics actually is i mean i don't know how the hell george bush became the president of america but there you go it's because of this what? type of thing they're quite popular right imagine if i was the super political mastermind tactician of winners right in terror and i was going to make changes to the game you know i was going to give you the uh, 
a new little trade hub, a new trade skill room and all this crap, yeah? But your mates at Yogscast, no, they just want it for the crack, right? So they stick it on their blog and they get a million votes or something, right? And, and you get 20. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dearie me. So it does seem kind of flawed. It looks interesting, but I don't know. I don't, I've not really been following Terra, but apart from... I think we did, uh, ages and ages ago, we did a trailing behind on Terra. And I think we laughed at it. But yeah. then that was the whole point of that stupid little series. <laughs> so there you go, that's Terra. Uh, the next thing we have got, son, is... It was more Steam Daily Deals. Daily deals. Oh, the Batman Arkham City DLC uh, is now available, which is just a load of Batman. It just, However, yeah. well, yeah, that, I mean, it's kind of pointless in my mind. I don't know. If, if you like that type of stuff, then yeah, whatever. But there is the, uh, the DLC challenge mode where you're in the Batcave, um, which is probably quite funky. Good lord! The thing I, I see, I, I looked at this and I looked at the picture, and the one on the far right, <laughs> the cartoon one, Mister Smooth Face Batman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, who, who would play with that skin? Yeah, but that's I mean, Batman from when I was a kid, though. That was. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't fit. It's not in a. In a yeah, but that's the whole point, and it's like they'll well, get nostalgia and buy it. I mean, look at the DLC now. You've got the Nightwing bundle and the Robin bundle, which just let you play as them characters. And I don't actually know who Nightwing is. No, I, I guess he's some kind of chum of Batman or something. Gonna, but the challenge map. Google it. It's gonna Google time. it. The challenge map um, is you get the Joker's Carnival, um, the Iceberg Lounge, and the Batcave, and it's only one pound ninety nine. So that's. I'd have to say that is probably worth it because I mean I do like Arkham City, but you get God knows how much content out of the actual game itself anyway. And um, if you completed all of that, well, you're a crazy because some of it was absolutely mental. I, Are you ready to I'm, report some on the uh... <laughs> Nightwing appears to be um, some sort of kid who fights with Batman? He, to be honest, he looks like Robin, <laughs> but with a different costume on. I think he's just you know, just the lad. The lad who isn't Robin. Of, his weapons are batons each around the head with them. He's <laughs> so, to be on arm, dear. But oh. he's oh no, got there, batons he's got, in the little. Yeah. yeah, he's got a little. He's got a little stick in one hand on this picture. So if, like if an, an fancy, electric stick. <laughs> <laughs> you fancy playing as him? Good luck to you. <laughs> um, the next thing we've got is well, Game of Thrones first trailer apparently of Cremazon. I, I want the Game of Thrones game, but it's got nothing oh, to do with it. Oh, it's the RPG. Yeah, I see what's going on here. I thought it was the uh, the crap game. You know, the bloody RTS oh, the, game. The, yeah, yeah, the strategy that isn't a strategy. <laughs> it's just you can pay to have people killed and all this kind of thing. Uh, I don't. I didn't like the look at that at all. But I, I, Game of Thrones RPG, I I could I want it now. He wants it now, the lad. I just everything about that the books were amazing the series was amazing it's like I, I just want it I don't care how good it is I know I'm going to end up getting it but that's, that's <laughs> what just going to be there buying it that's what they're yeah. banking on isn't it son <laughs> yeah. idiots like me you'll just sit there go oh game of thrones well, hopefully it's quite good I mean because it, it could be I mean there's a massive world there you know mm. all the lore and whatever's there so they could get crazy but again it just comes down to how much money's been spent on it and who the hell's developing it who is developing it actually <laughs> that's a that's going to be the the, the chipper, isn't it? I go, let's let's find out. Let's find out. Well, I don't know. It's probably some unknown company, some small company or something. Kirioff's finding out. Oh yeah, know it. Uh, it is. Uh, oh, I can't even. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I'd found it. So there we go. It. Unit loss reports. We don't know. So moving on, the next thing we've got on the 22nd of December is Victor, the Machine Herald preview. Now this is off a new writer on Unit Lost Herbs. So please welcome him, to, welcome him to the family after I'm able to talk because I don't know what is going on. It's like I've, my mouth's not working right. <sighs> anyway, this is apparently the chap who made Blitzcrank, so Kirioff should know all about him. Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm big on the law for, for legal actions. <laughs> The law on League of Legends is terrible. I'm I'm just going to say it's terrible. I've I've read little bits of it and it's so shy. It's like a kid could have wrote it. I think a kid probably has, hasn't it? (laughs) Especially some of them, like Jax. We've mentioned this before. Oh, he's the one with the lamppost. Just say it again. Just say it again. His his law's absolutely awful. No one knew who he was. He turned up 
and said I wanted fights in the field of justice. And then the the some of the lads went, yeah, all right then. And uh, he just beat everyone down completely. He just won every fight he ever went into. And they said, well, excuse me, sir, you you seem to be a tad overpowered. Uh, we're going to take away your weapon and impose restrictions on you. And uh, you can fight with this brass lamppost or something along those lines. And uh, he continued to win every fight he ever had. And then he just it's not the case when I play him in on Summoner's Rift, son. He falls under my boot when I <laughs> stunned him. That exploded uh, the old light grenade in his face and blasted him with the friggin' laser. He capitulates hard, son. Hard, real hard. Terrible. It's just every character is like some sort of... Or they're called Mary Sue characters, aren't they? Where they're just stupidly overpowered in the story. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. so good that no one can beat them. But every every champion in League of Legends seems to have it's, that sort of storyline. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so you know, we're talking about that as well. When you see like the the, the new champion spotlights and stuff like that, or not, when it's the when an, it's an actual new champion, not like uh, they did one on the uh, the Turtle Freak champion the other day, and I think they did one on Gangplank as well um, a couple of days before. But when it's the actual new champion, it's so retarded. How they they like go out of their way to make the champion look like it's dead good. Right, if you notice, most of the time it's fighting bots, yeah? Um, and they don't have the nameplates on. If they do, the level's below. Like, he'll be running around in Dominion as Ari, um, Freequill. And he's attacking people who are, like, two levels below him. So, obviously, he's going to destroy them. And it's like, it makes the character look way better than it is. And they say things, well, like, Volley Bear. I think the Volley Bear one was where he went, amazing damage, amazing tank, healing potential. It's like, so he does everything, does he? <laughs> no he doesn't Volley Bear's a tank he doesn't do any damage it, 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 you know it's like over the top and it's like that's what draws people in because you're like oh my god look at this he's just gone round Dominion and he's just smashed in like oh god see what he did to uh, Jarvan he smashed him he smashed him well yeah because Jarvan was three levels below him that's why he smashed yeah. him <laughs> so I've had my rant anyway the next <laughs> thing the, the next thing that we've got is there's a 300 RP um, which are the riot points bonus when you buy riot points um, this is like the Christmas deal. Um, and I think, actually, well, the whole points thing's a joke anyway because the the increments that make you buy them in are not enough to actually buy anything, but too much to buy one thing. So you end up with a bit left over. So <laughs> you need to buy a bit more. And I think the same's done with uh, on the Xbox with the Microsoft points. Yeah. Um, so you've always got a little piddly bit in your account and it's always there tempting. Why, sir, don't you come and get... Another 400 IP, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, this way, sir. Oh, yes, sir. No, oh, yes, sir. I've fallen bitch wrong. into that more often than not. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's how they get you, isn't it? It's just like, because every time I'd, I'd like, I'll see, it's like, um, I did it with uh, yeah. uh, Wukong. I bought Wukong, and I thought to myself, well, okay, that's fine. I've bought him. I've got I've got loads of hours in this game. I, You know, they deserve a bit of money. And then I noticed I was like 10 RP off getting him a skin for him. And I thought, well, that's a bit crap. Because what am I going to spend that RP on? I mean, nothing. There's no other character I want to play at the moment. That's why I just bought this one. So, so, and then you end up buying a bit more, which then means you've got like 400 RP, which is again not. Quite got to learn to resist it. So it's like me at the moment, right? I want, I want to buy Ari because I think she's quite a. Um, she'll fit in with my playstyle because I like the skill shot characters um, and going mid most of the time. So. I want to get her, but I've, I think I've got 5,700 IP and she's 6,300 and it's dead tempting to just go, well, I'll just buy her. But no, I ain't just buying her with riot points. I'm going to wait until I've got enough IP and then I'm going to legitimately pick her up and then it's going to be Christmas. But this thing, this this 300 RP points bonus, let's go back to what the actual news post was about. Um, <laughs> it's probably quite nice, actually, especially with... Um, skins that get discounted you know you could probably get a couple of discounted skins like with your extra rp points so that's i like that that's kind of nice yeah i'll i'll I no doubt will fall victim to it and end up buying some before the deal's gone <laughs> as he does time and time again now yeah. the last thing we've got is um planet side 2 beta signups went live yesterday now i immediately signed up for this cremazin reported on it and um it's i, I mean with planet side one i I actually bought Planet Side One from I think I bought it from Amazon um, years ago, and it was like bargain bin price. I think it was like a fiver, six pound, or you know, really cheap. And I bought it, and I remember installing it, and I didn't. Well, I knew what I was doing, but there was nobody playing it, so I, it was kind of a bit lame. And this, you know, this must have been about six years ago, I think. 
six, maybe six years ago, seven years ago. So it was like past its prime and I, you know, it didn't really look that good, you know, outdated mechanics and all that stuff. But the stories though, I remember seeing some stuff on YouTube of, there was like a documentary with, um, I don't think, they're not called guilds. I think they were called outfits. I'm not entirely sure, but it's basically like a guild. And they were like going on this massive attack, like against this base. And they had like, l like 10 airplanes, like loads of tanks, loads of infantry. And it looked dead good. It was like, well, this looks really good. Like, so if they can replicate that with Planet Side 2, um, that would be quite good. But I think the critical thing is they need to have proper FPS mechanics, not cheesy MMO FPS mechanics like they had in Planet Side. Now, they should have the technology to do it, surely. I don't know. Um, and the other thing is the scale of the battles. You don't want small battles. You want massive battles. You know, it's no good just having, you know, oh, only 50 people are allowed in this area. Well, because you can get that on Battlefield 3. You want 500 people having a fight. Again, now they do that, I don't know. But hopefully they can, because then that would be quite interesting. But I'd love to get into the beta. So if anyone from Sony's listening to this, give me beta access, you pigs. I'm me as well, because I've heard a lot about the original Planet Side. And it, I, it passed me by completely. By the time I knew Well, it passed about me it, by, it was, really, yeah. It was, you know, it was gone. It was dead in the water. But Planet Side 2, everything I've seen about it, I, I just want to give it a try, because it's there's not really, there's not a lot in the way of MMO FPS. There's not really, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, which on paper offers the same scale and the same kind of mechanics. So uh, it's looking good. I don't want to try it, but I want to test it. So uh, if you could chuck two keys our way, that would be delightful. We'd love it. Okay, so I think we'll wrap this up then. So, um, well, actually, we'll give you a little bit of uh, bit of news uh, from Unit Lost itself. I don't think there will be a game in news next Friday because it's Christ Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, ain't it, next Friday? It's the 20... Is it the 30th next Friday? Hmm. Uh, is that New Year's Eve? Question, sir. No, that's the day before New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is the Saturday. Oh, so there might actually be a uh, game in news then on Friday. Good lord! You know, no, but it, we, we are coming into the people. Well, we are coming into like the holiday Christmas period where you have to go and do all that crap with your family. So unfortunately, the content may start getting a little bit slower. But I think you can you can. Well, you can forgive us for that. Surely, surely. You'll all be with your families anyway. You know, you'll all be drunk and off your faces like everyone else. Well, hopefully. Christmas, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro, that'll do. Let's get out of here. We've been Starlos and Kirio from Unilost.com. We'll catch you next time, people. Doodaloo.